Hello everyone. Uh, so I am uh, Rupushri AP from Mysore School of Architecture. Welcome to VTU E Sikshana. Uh, this is uh, fourth more uh, fifth module which uh, which I am continuing from the last session. Uh, so in the last session I had uh, discussed about uh, um, different uh, types of suppression systems, fire suppression systems. So in this session also I will be continuing that same thing. So as uh, in the last class as we discussed uh, uh, wet riser systems uh, and uh, dry riser systems, two types of systems are used for uh, high rise buildings. Now in this uh, active, uh, active systems, uh, this is uh, something which, uh, I, uh, which we had stopped discussing on wet, wet pipe sprinkler systems. So, in this, if you see, there is a water supply here and then main drain connection here, fire department connection, check valve, water motor alarm, alarm valve, gate valve, con uh, gate valve to control water supply to the systems. So, this is how from the water supply the pipe is taken to the roof and then parallelly throughout the rooms the pipe is run, water pipe is run and there are sprinklers attached. Okay. So these sprinklers work with the pressure, water pressure. Okay. So in the wet pipe system, there is a water continuously present in the pipes. In the dry pipe systems, so, uh, uh, there is no water continuously present in the pipes, but this is used in a different context itself. Like while freezing temperatures and broken pipes are a problem, usually in uh, cold climates, freezing temperatures are an issue for water supply because the water in the pipes can get frozen. So that is the reason these kind of uh, sprinkler systems can be used in colder climates where freezing temperatures are high and broken pipes for some case for some reason if there is an issue of uh, breaking the pipes the pipes are broken so in that particular kind of situation dry pipe sprinkler systems can be used so the dry pipe especially broken pipes and freezing temperature system the dry pipe system is useful uh, in that particular situation. Air pressure is maintained in the pipes until a sprinkler head ruptures. Then the air escapes and water enters the pipes and exits through the open sprinklers. Because of this delay, dry pipe systems are not as effective as wet pipe systems during the early stages of a fire. Because it takes time to open up a, due to the air pressure which is maintained in the pipes until a sprinkler head gets ruptured. So during that gap there is a possibility of a fire getting increased. So that is the reason this is used lesser but unfortunately in the freezing temperatures this has to be used. So in the dry pipe system they are also very similar to wet pipe systems with one major difference. The pipe is not constantly filled with the water. The pipe which is connected to this is not constantly filled with the water. Here you can see. Here it is written as air. Bottom it is water. The supply could be water but it will always not be allowed to travel inside the extinguisher so that uh, there is a continuous flow of water. It is controlled. Instead, the water is held behind a dry pipe wall. There is a wall behind. Here you can see this wall. It is stopped there. Right? So, usually some distance away from where the sprinklers are rotated. Again, it is the same manner. Alarm, the smoke alarm or detection alarm is uh, kept near the sprinkler with the system air pressure. So, in the dry pipe, if you see there is a air, 
in this dry pipe there is a air filled in and there is a dry pipe valve which is located in the top of the just below the uh, pipe and there is a butterfly valve to control the water supply which is running through the pipe. So like a wet pipe system when the temperature at the ceiling becomes hot enough when the temperature at the ceiling becomes hot enough the glass bulb or fusible link of the sprinkler breaks. So in this the glass bulb uh, there is a sprinkler here in that the fusible the fuse will break. When the hot air rises up. However, in this case water is not immediately available because the pipe is not water filled. Instead air is released from the now open sprinkler head. So however, in this case water is not immediately available because the pipe is not water filled. right? So air is there instead of water. So air is released from the now open sprinkler head. Nitrogen gas or pressurized air is stored in the pipes connected to a water storage tank or mains. This creates a drop in pressure causing the dry pipe wall to open and water to fill the systems. It now when the, when the valve is open only then, then the water enters into the pipe until then this nitrogen or other uh, gas is other air is left in that pipe. So that comes out of the pipe when the fire occurs, when fire reaches the height and then after the pressure difference is maintained, the water supply from the pipe releases up into the sprinklers. Water will then flow from the open sprinkler head. Since there is a delay between sprinkler operation and water flow, the size of the dry pipe systems is limited. The size of the pipe is limited. The size limitation is intended to minimize the amount of time water delivery is delayed. It is important to note that at least the portion of the building where the water comes in and the dry pipe valve is located will need to have temperatures hot enough to prevent freezing. So this is about uh, dry pipe sprinkler systems. There are two more in the pipeline that is pre-action sprinkler systems and deluge sprinkler systems. Pre-action sprinkler systems are a combination of wet and dry pipe systems. So it is a combination of wet and dry pipe systems typically used in areas at high risk of water damage. When there is a high risk of water damage then there is no air, uh, no water or uh, for some reason the water is uh, spoiled. So in that kind of situations wet and dry pipe systems can be merged which is a pre-action sprinkler systems. Water is in this also water is not stored in the pipes until a fire is detected when the water is released to the sprinkle, sprinkler heads. The response time is as fast as a standard wet pipe sprinkler system. So, this is quite faster than dry pipe because it immediately releases the water. So it is uh, uh, quick as wet pipe sprinkler systems. Automatic fire sprinkler systems are also available and are effective in large areas such as office and shopping centers. So this is the pre-action sprinkler systems when the smoke alarm or smoke detection happens right there is a releasing panel here towards this then uh, there is a wall control there is a water again water is not present on the top there is a air running over uh, then system air pressure is attached drain wall supply water pressure. Then we have deluge sprinkler systems. Deluge sprinkler systems are typically used in areas where rapid fire damage is a major concern. Where rap 
rapid fire damage happens rapidly fire damage happens so at very sensitive spaces like uh, warehouses where a uh, lot of combustible uh, 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 solid combustibles are there and uh, uh, liquid combustibles where it can rapidly spread the fire and damage the uh, structure so in that kind of system deluge sprinkler systems are used and it is also used in high rise buildings in these systems the nozzle is always open the nozzle of the uh, sprinklers are always open they are triggered by an alarm that opens a water release valve they are just triggered by an alarm which is detected by the smoke or heat or any kind of detectors and it opens the water release valve immediately water is not present in the piping until the system operates here also it is same case as dry pipe water is not present in the pipes sprinkler uh, uh, sprinkler are open uh, the piping is at atmospheric pressure to prevent the water supply pressure from forcing water into the piping a deluge valve is used a separate valve called deluge valve is used to prevent the water supply pressure from forcing water into the piping so it controls the water supply pressure a deluge valve is used in the water supply connection which is mechanically latched valve it is a non resetting valve and stays open once stripped because the heat sensing elements present in the automatic sprinklers have been removed resulting in open sprinklers in the automatic sprinklers uh, which is attached individually the heat sensing elements is been is been removed that is why it acts as a open sprinklers so the deluge wall must be open as a signal by fire alarm systems they could be a central fire alarm systems so anywhere uh, the fire is happening the alarm starts beeping and then the particular sprinkler gets filled with the water so this is how uh, these sprinklers look they have this releasing panel and valve so uh, again this is also filled with water and air older buildings may have pipes that apply fire suppressant chemicals such as carbon dioxide or halon fire codes now pro prohibit these chemicals the former absorbs oxygen creating a danger to humans whereas the latter depletes the earth's ozone layer so this is uh, earlier they also were instead of water they also were using carbon dioxide which are the suppressant chemical and halon but carbon dioxide creates dangers for humans because it is not good for human health uh, whereas halon depletes uh, uh, depletes the earth's ozone layer these are the different components of sprinklers fire fighting pumps and accessories piping panels sprinklers these are the different types of sprinklers panels sprinkler alarm valves and wiring and instrumentation when the uh, sp uh, sprinkler head opens up this is how the water showers these are the different types of sprinklers heads so these are quite common which would have been seen which we would have seen in a lot of pendant sprinkler so this uh, pendant head this is like a pendant head then there is a upright head conventional head where there is a sprinkler and then there is a conventional head then horizontal side wall from the wall if we are projecting the sprinkler then it is also possible not just from below the roof but also from the wall from the side walls it can be projected then vertical side wall 
resist pendant resist pendants is nothing but uh, this uh, circular uh, rig rim will conceal in the roof resist pendant again uh, different types of resist pendant this also is a quite common kind of resist pendants which we see which doesn't jet out but it is concealed so uh, concealed horizontal wall concealed pendant so different types of uh, sprinkler heads can be used based on the requirements then we have uh, active systems in the active systems we have smoke alarms smoke alarms saves lives smoke alarms that are properly installed and maintained play a vital role in reducing fire deaths and injuries smoke detectors are usually housed in plastic enclosures plastic enclosures typically shaped like a disc this is shaped like a disc about 150 millimeters 6 inches in dia this dia could be 6 inches 150 millimeters right and uh, 25 millimeters 1 inch thick but shape and size can vary vary so these smoke detectors are devices that senses smoke as we discussed in the earlier sessions the smoke is something which uh, causes for the fatal incidents so the smoke detectors detects the smoke as soon as it smells the smoke it start beeping it connects to the alarm so these smoke detectors are devices that sense smoke senses smoke typically as an indicator of a fire so commercial smoke detectors issue a signal to a fire fire alarm control panel so in the commercial setup there will be a separate fire alarm control panel where these smoke detectors detects and sends the signals from these detectors to the alarm control panel which is a part of a central fire alarm systems so in huge scaled buildings like commercial residential apartments high rise buildings there will be a central fire alarm systems for sure so this they are uh, the alarms are set at place where uh, continuous uh, um, monitoring is happening and at that particular time they so uh, they start working on the suppression systems and usually no alarm from the detector itself however some do have built in sounders so in the commercial they will not have alarms with the detector but household smoke detectors are there where they will have alarms within the set so they can be called as smoke alarms household smoke detectors can be called as smoke alarms because they have uh, uh, alarms uh, within the smoke detectors and that is worked on the basis of battery storage so these smoke detectors can be detected either optically there are two types of uh, smoke detectors which work based on photoelectric system and another one is by physical process ionization so these are the two systems it adapts to detect the smoke so detectors may use one or both sensing methods it can either use one or both merged sensitive alarms can be used to detect and deter smoking in banned areas smoke detectors in large commercial and industrial buildings are usually connected to a central fire alarm systems they are centrally connected control is at one panel now household smoke detectors household smoke detectors or it can also be called as smoke alarms issue an audible they will have an audible or visual alarm locally from the detector itself they can be battery powered single units or several interlinked hand wired mains power devices backed up by batteries so the energy is stored in a battery itself and it works based on the battery which is audible or 
visual alarm. So household alarm detectors will have built-in alarm which is which works based on the audible or visual aspect. So as we discussed photoelectric smoke alarm is one type of smoke alarm which detects based on the optical optical sense. So photoelectric smoke alarms respond fast, faster to slow burning fires. They respond very fast for slow burning fires which does not spread easily. It could be like class A fires like uh, where uh, combustibles of started burning something like that. Class B and class C can be rapid but class A is quite slow. So this alarms can be adapted in those kind of areas. These fires tend to smolder for hours and produce large amount of smoke. Since the solid takes lot of time to uh, burn, the smoke is covered all over smoldering of fire happens. So it produces large amount of smoke in the same space. Common causes of smoldering fires are cigarettes, fireplace embers and electrical shorts, short circuits. Smoldering fires can often occur in drapes, bedding, carpeting, upholstered furniture where you have this uh, cloth kind of material and it starts uh, smoldering. It starts burning slowly and the smoke is spread all over. So in the end those kind of systems photoelectric systems can be adapted. Ionization smoke alarms they are the smoke alarms which respond more quickly to fast flaming fires. Fast flaming fires could be class A, class B where uh, liquid and gaseous products are you uh, or uh, acts as a source. So these fires tend to ignite quickly and produce large flames but less smokes. They ignite very quickly, produce large flames but there is large harm also but in the same time less, little lesser smoke than the other one. So common cause of flaming fires are combustibles that burn rapidly such as gasoline or other flammable liquids newspapers, cleaning products or cooking grease etc. So those are fire detectors. Fire alarm systems. So there are fire alarm systems also, different types of fire alarm systems. Warns people when there is a smoke, fire, carbon monoxide, CO or other fire related emergencies are detected. When there is a smoke, fire and it can also detect carbon monoxide easily. These alarms may be activated automatically from smoke detectors and heat detectors or may also be activated via manual fire alarm activation process devices such as manual call points or pull stations. So the image which we see here is a manual fire alarm activation. When somebody notices, when some human being notices the fire, this is a manual alarming system where you pull down the switch then the alarm starts beeping and people evacuate from the building and then the fire is suppressed. So this is a manual fire alarm activation device. Like this uh, there are many different ways. In the manual also there is a glass breaking one uh, and uh, this is pulling down the lever. So different ways of uh, uh, alerting is there. So in the same way there are different smoke detectors, even heat detectors are available for alarming systems. So alarms can be either motorized bells or wall mountable sounders or horns. It can be adapted with motorized bells, automatic can be adapted with motorized bells or wall mountable, it can be wall mounted sounders and horns. They can also be speaker strobes which sound an alarm followed by a voice evacuation message 
which warns people inside the building not to use the elevators it also has a feature of uh, voice recording and uh, voice evacuation message to be told where uh, it alerts the people to not to use the elevators or lifts so that during the evacuation process it becomes an easy so alarms can also come with the speaker strobes so in high rise buildings different evacuation messages may be played on each floor depending on the location of the fire say if 100 floors 100 150 floors are there and there is some 20th floor has a fire so each floor can play different different messages evacuation messages uh, based on the floor on which the fire is available so the floor of the fire the floor the fire is on along with once above it may be told to evacuate which floors much lower the may simply be asked to stand by it is also possible to clear only the floors which is required to be cleared than the other ones depending on the uh, amount of the fire so these are different types of fire detectors heat detectors there is a heat detector smoke detector carbon monoxide detector multi sensor detector a multi sensor is nothing but it could detect heat smoke carbon monoxide everything manual call point manually also you can alarm so that is about smoke detectors and smoke alarm now we look into the wet riser fire fighting systems so there are two types when it comes to high rise buildings there are two types of fire fighting systems one is wet riser systems another one is dry riser systems so what is wet wet riser fire fighting systems in the high rise building since the availability of the height the floors the number of floors which are there it is difficult to access each and every floor so there is a vertical transport of water Uh, which is happening through wet riser and dry risers in a different manner so in the wet risers fire fighting systems wet rising mains something called as wet rising mains are fitted in tall buildings due to the excessive pressures required to pump water to high levels a wet riser is a supply system intended to distribute water to multiple levels or compartments of a building as a component of its fire fighting systems so basically the intention is to transfer the water to different floor levels so in this they are advantageous to the fire service in two respects basically this wet riser and dry risers are mostly related with the fire service people external fire service where the snorkeling ladder snorkel ladder or firefighters come and plug in the uh, hose so for them this system is made if there is no sufficient system provided inside the building so from the external surface there should be an access for these types of systems so firstly they provide a fixed distribution system within the building that requires no fire service resources or equipment secondly it is designed as part of and to maintain the compartmentation of the building even the vertical floors are done compartmentalized planned in compartmentals right so this is about uh, this is one sketch where uh, it shows uh, wet riser systems where we have two pumps one is standby and one is permanent uh, pump and there is a tank or it, uh, there is a water tank and then two pipes are connected at different points at the external surface where it could be duct also there could be possibility of beam get duct and inside the duct there is an accessibility so that is also possible or it could be just right at the external complete surface on the external surface they lay the pipes so that reaches each floor 
from each floor there will be a hydrant or a hose reel and from there again it can be connected. Wet rising means consist of vertical pipes similar to the dry rising main system with landing walls at each floor except ground. So, in both dry rising and wet rising there are pipes connected from bottom of the floor to the top of topmost floor and there is a valves connected at each floors. These are the valves connected at each of the floors. Okay. The pipe system is connected to a permanent water supply normally a tank fed from the town mains. Duplicate automatic pumps, one duty and one standby supply this water to the pipe system. So, in wet rice main are designed to supply 1500 liters per minute in the wet rice per minute 1500 liters has to be supplied and it has to be supplied continuously till 45 minutes. 1500 liters per minute that means into 45 minutes that should be the storage capacity of the tank which is located from the direct this should be the location uh, tank which is located from the direct mains water supply. So, capacity of that should be that equal to 1500 into 45 minutes or 50 minutes or 60 minutes as per the rules required based on the location of the structure. So, due to the height of the building and the pressures used water pressure reduction valves are fitted at the outlets of each floor. So, here we can see water tanks pumps this is a conceptual sketch of how the pipes can be wet raising mains are directly and there is an air vent then they are connected with fire fighting shaft again and uh, this is a fire fighting shaft continuous fire fighting shaft there are landing walls located each now say for example there is a uh, problem or an issue in second floor so there is a fire in second floor so only that wall can be connected with the pipe uh, with the minimum length of the hose reel and then the fire can be extinguished so that's the basic concept of this wet rising means wet sprinkler systems dry sprinkler systems or a horizontal spread under the roof this wet rising main and dry rising mains are vertical vertical pipes which are located towards the external surface of the building for high rise buildings so similarly uh, in the wet rising uh, systems you can see the number of flows differing in these two buildings and there is a external pipes which are located at the um, each floors of these buildings and there is a fire hydrants located at each floor of these buildings ok. Now when there is a fire appliance that is a fire vehicle comes and they, they are supposed to connect the pipe to provide the water they can, they should be easily able to provide since they will not be able to reach the top floor directly uh, any other floors directly this is the system where they can connect and the control can be done below so that to change uh, to uh, supply the water from ground level to whichever level it is required. So, in the wet dry scissors always the water is allowed. In the dry raises, a dry riser is a system of pipe work and walls that runs up through a building. The system allows firefighters to easily access water from each individual floors of the building. Similarly, here also in uh, firefighters can actually access each floors directly through the duct through the duct and suppress the fire. Here also we can see there is uh, towards the external wall there is a uh, connection made 
where the water is drawn from the fire vehicles and then pulled up to provide the water. It consists of vertical pipe with water inlet on ground level located on an external wall and outlets known as landing walls which are usually connected located in a dry riser cabinet on each floor. The dry risers are usually located in the fire fighting shaft. So if you see these dry risers are usually these are mostly provided in the shaft. There would be a vertical shaft there would be a vertical shaft provided in the building and these pipes are connected inside that shaft which is towards the external surface of the building. And that shaft can be called as firefighting shaft. The firefighters fill the pipe with pressurized water by connecting the fire engine hose to the inlet on the ground floor. They can then connect hoses directly to the life saving water supply on the floor nearest to the fire using the outlet walls connected to the dry raises. As I mentioned it can uh, be a firefighters can reach the respective flows in the vertical shaft and then they can connect the fire hoses in that particular wall outlet wall which is pro provided in that floor and then suppress the fire. So basically how does this work? Connecting the hoses in this way is a much quicker system for firefighters. It is much easier for them to uh, suppress. So the hoses they used to connect on each floor are shorter. The length of the now from now from here if I have to connect directly it is the length of this is too much for me to connect to the third floor or 50th floor or 100th floor. If this is the system provided from the shaft easily one can access the required floor and connect it. The hose reel which can be added in that particular floor connected in that particular floor can be smaller. So they can then connect hoses directly to the life saving water supply on the floor nearest to the fire using the outlet walls connected to the dry riser. So the hoses they use to connect on each floor are shorter and therefore lighter and there is no requirement to run long heavier hoses up through the whole of the building. Using dry risers saves time and ultimately saves lives. You can even see the images like this where dry riser inlets could be just at the entry level or towards the outside where the fire vehicle can come and connect to these hoses, these points. So we can see that the fire vehicle is coming here and it is connected to the uh, towards the external surface and there is a fire at the second floor and then there is a inlet walls provided at each which is called as a landing wall and on top of this direct on top towards the sky uh, towards the end of the pipe there is an air release wall and now since the second floor has a problem of fire the hose is directly connected people reach from the shaft to the second floor and then it can be directly connected to the uh, directly connected to the hose can be directly connected to the main supply of water and then it can be extinguished. So we have uh, uh, in the fire vehicles if we see there is a snock uh, different kinds of equipments added. So those that is called as snorkel ladder. So this is a terminology which can be called for fire vehicles. A truck with a snorkel ladder is an effective firefighting facility which has a self-contained breathing apparatus, ventilating equipment, first aid kits, 
and hydraulic rescue tools besides a collapse, collapsible telescopic ladder. So this snorkel ladder which is a truck firefighting engine it can be called as firefighting engine or a truck or a fire vehicle will have a snorkel ladder 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 which is uh, in case if there is no dry riser wet riser or at any case if somebody has to reach the heights or uh, it has to suppress the water uh, uh, building fire to the external surface then it can reach from there so it has a snorkel ladder which is like 20 30 meters high is an effective firefighting facility which has self contained breathing apparatus it also has because for firefighters it is uh, required that they are exposed to the smoke, smoke most of the time so it has a breathing apparatus inside that and ventilating equipment also is there first aid kits for themselves and hydraulic rescue tools besides a collapsible telescopic ladder that ladder is called as a collapsible telescopic ladder. So in this image it can be seen that you have this fire vehicle there is no accessibility of any other vehicle here or going around the buildings are closely placed. So you can see this snorkel ladder this snorkel ladder has access still more than the building height and then from there the person a person goes into the uh, uh, this uh, uh, this kind of a setup and he uh, connects the pipe with the water and then the fire uh, and they, the firefighter can extinguish the fire on the surface of the building so it looks something like this this these are at different scales or sizes the ladders availability are based on the sizes. So this, these equipments are called as snorkel ladders. So they have a working height of 32 to 55 meters, 180 degree fold fly bone, boom mounted aluminum ladder and aluminum telescopic water line. So here if you see this can this ladder can go to reach an height of 32 to 55 meters it varies actually from 20 meter 30 meter 40 meter 50 meter but uh, uh, maximum is like 55 to 60 meters is the height which it can reach and 180 degree folding fly bone so this can tilt 180 degree either side Okay. and it has an aluminium telescopic water line water foam monitor also it contains electric controls suitable for pump capacity it also has water foam monitor right it also has basket which is made up of aluminium the basket is what we saw in the picture where a person can stand this is the basket where the person can stand and extinguish the fire that is made out of aluminium that is made out of aluminium uh, where four to five persons can stand and the capacity of that is 400 kg automatic balancing can be done closed circuit diaphragm control panel, under basket protection system, crash protection, overload protection, extreme wind protection, all these kind of protection can be, should be provided for the snorkel order. And it works on the basis of hydraulic systems, proportional control, variable stroke, load sensing pump, optional diesel, petrol, electric manual, auxiliary power units. It also work can it can also work on diesel, petrol, electricity, okay, and it has load sensing pumps also. It can have load sensing pumps. So uh, in this particular system, it can be worked. So this is about uh, snorkel ladder, and uh, 
in this uh, session we have uh, almost like covered with the uh, active uh, um, active uh, extinguisher systems then there are few more left with the passive extinguisher systems which can be covered in the next session for you after that we have uh, special services to be covered which covers uh, uh, central LPG supply systems and um, uh, high speed diesel storage systems like this you have special services which has to be covered in this particular module. Thank you.